Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Ellen Pristak. I am the coordinator of the Great Mind Salon program. Um, it's always a pleasure for me to present our amazing uh, speakers. It's especially it's for, special for me because Andrea is a friend and I have had the pleasure of teaching her sons early in my career at the, at, at the Jewish Center. And uh, I'm so thrilled that she accepted this opportunity to be one of our Great Minds Salon presenters. Andrea is the care manager at JFCS, where she has worked for 25 years. She works with seniors in the community, helping them to remain independent and safe. She also has a private practice focusing on older adults. So without any further ado, I present to you Andrea Gaynor. Hi. So thank you for attending this evening. Uh, when Ellen asked me to do this program, I said, Ellen, I'm not a physicist. And she <laughs> said, not everyone is a physicist. There's a range of interests in the synagogue and um, people will be happy to uh, learn more about your, your subject. So thank you, Ellen and Moshe and Rabbi, who all helped me tonight with the, with the tech support, which is to me the scariest part of doing this program. So for the past 15 of the 25 years that I've been at JFCS, I have worked with seniors. I've been a geriatric care manager. And I'll tell you a little bit how these seven documents came uh, into being in that I've done a lot of assessments and consultations with seniors. And we had a checklist of things that we asked them. And I realized that, you know, the checklists are yes or no. Do you have this document? Do you have this document? Yes. But I realized they they needed more probing, that, that you had to go a little bit deeper into just yes. And I will give you some examples of that as we go through the documents tonight. Um, and then once I started um, doing that, I added more documents to the checklist and started to give them more information about each, each item. And people really seemed to respond very well to it and started asking me for my list. And I actually did this program through JFCS during the pandemic. It was one of our programs um, during that time. So uh, just a disclaimer, I am not an attorney. I am just giving you information that might help you understand uh, important documents a little better. I advise you to speak with a legal advisor, or tax or financial advisor, if you want more information about it, if you want information about implementing any of this. So having said all that, um, I'm going to share the screen, hopefully. OK. Is that? Perfect. OK, you can see that. OK. I hope it continues to work. OK. Um, Ellen, did you want to speak to the, um, the chat and questions? You did. Sure. Did I okay. did mention that if at the end of your presentation, if anybody has a question, they can put it in the chat directly okay. to you. They okay. can go scroll right. through and put it directly to you. Okay. So the first of the documents um, is an advanced medical directive, uh, also referred to as a living will. This typically contains information and instructions about medical interventions that you may or may not want, such as resuscitation, artificial nutrition, intubation, et cetera. Also contained in this is information about who your medical care proxy or proxies are. It's important that if you are an older adult, and even if you're not an older adult, it's good to have a backup person as a medical care proxy, not just to have one person, because one never knows what might happen. And again, in the case of an elderly couple, oftentimes they just kind of 
automatically put each other down and it, it's not a good idea. So it's important to consider a, a backup for that. Um, the other thing that's important is that whomever is your medical care proxy should hold a copy of your advanced directive. Um, if, if it's your son, and, and I'm going to use son, and I'm going to use uh, daughter, or I might use child or heir or interchangeably. Not everyone has children. Not everyone has children who might want to be responsible for this. So I'm using, allow me to use the words interchangeably. Um, that individual should have a copy of it because if they are called upon, if they're mom or dad is hospitalized or someone their, their proxy for is hospitalized, they need this, first of all, to know what their wishes are, but also permission, um, the institution, the medical institution will need permission. And this will indicate that they have permission to make these medical decisions. The next is a POLST. A POLST is, let me just go to this, okay. A POLST is a physician's order for life-sustaining treatment. This is a document that is not signed or uh, discussed with your attorney, but rather your typically your primary care physician. Uh, Dr. David Burrill, who is a geriatrician in Princeton, um, is like the godfather of the POLST in New Jersey. He created goals of care and thought this was a very important thing uh, to have for people in the state. And what he says about a POLST, it's either for people who are at the end of their life, and a lot of people don't know if they are or they're not, or for people who have very strong feelings about their end of life care. And aside from the fact that if this is a document that's filled out with your physician instead of your lawyer, the EMTs are really need to abide by this. So it's typically printed in green, so it's distinguished from all the other documents that you might have. Some people post it on the refrigerator. If it says do not hospitalize, for example, and the EMTs are called, um, they are not obligated to hospitalize you or even resuscitate you. Um, so in that way, it's binding, unlike a, an advanced directive where they will likely take you to the hospital anyway. Um, some doctors actually do not like this because they feel there might be opportunities for a meaningful recovery that might be bypassed if you're not resuscitated. Um, I don't know if they're concerned about litigation or anything such as that. I like to think they're a little more altruistic and they just feel like, why wouldn't you give yourself a chance um, if you could? Um, so that's a POLST. A lot of people aren't familiar with it. You can go on to POLST New Jersey and you can find it. You can discuss it with your uh, physician. I believe Medicare pays for a an end of life conversation with your physician. And this is something you may want to find out a little bit more about. The next document is a power of attorney. Okay. There are basically two types. There's a springing power of attorney, which goes into effect only if you're incapacitated and a physician has to make that determination. So it can be a little unwieldy. If people are really have strong feelings about wanting to maintain their control over things, they may opt for a springing power of attorney. Uh, typically a durable power of attorney is, is a little more practical. It's effective immediately upon signing it. So whomever is assigned to you as a power of attorney or you choose as a power of attorney, they can step in and um, pay your bills and handle financial um, con you know, um, matters on your behalf with this power of attorney. Um, powers of attorney also should have HIPAA language included in it. HIPAA is Health Information Privacy Protection Act. 
uh, language so you can access medical re records on behalf of someone. Um, I Someone contacted me the other day. Uh, a woman wanted to um, call her son's insurance company to help him navigate bills and so forth. And she asked me um, how she might be able to do that. And I said they it, they may require a power of attorney and the HIPAA language that that speaks to that. She could jump in and take care of that. Also, you know, on behalf of someone, if you're um, needing to pay medical bills or obtain medical information for someone, that's also relevant. Many banks or most banks have their own POA forms. I know I think Bank of America does. So it's good to think about this uh, in advance. If you have local accounts, if someone has to step in, uh, write checks for you, pay your bills, and you're dealing with a, a bank, a local bank, you may want to inquire and see if they have their own power of attorney form. That doesn't preclude the other uh, POA form. Um, also, if you have a long-term care policy, uh, they are very, very proprietary about who can access information about that. So if you were calling for someone who needed, if you needed to open a long-term care policy, if they needed to go into uh, a long-term care setting or if they needed home care services and you wanted to find out uh, what their policy would include, they won't tell you anything. It's all, you know, very um, private. So uh, if you provide them with a power of attorney, then that person can speak to them on your behalf. And so it's good to set that up um, in advance because what happens is you have to send them the power of attorney. Their attorneys have to review it and okay it. Uh, so that can take extra weeks. So you, if you have such a policy, you may wanna look into that and see if you can just put that on file in case somebody has to step in and take care of that for you. Just gonna take a sip of water. Okay, so burial plan is something that was on our checklist. Do you have a burial plan? Some people said yes, some people said no. Um, the people, Oh, let me just do this. Okay, there we go. Okay. So if they said they did, uh, and I used to be really uncomfortable having this conversation with people, but I, I'm not anymore because it's so important. So if they did have a burial plan, I asked them if the people who would be taking care of that knew about it, not even their spouse, maybe somebody else, a child or an heir or somebody. And a lot of times they said, I don't, I don't really think they know. And I know a lot of people who have had a loss, um, parents usually, and they have no idea what their parents' wishes were. And they, there's so much chaos, even if a, a loss is expected, a death is expected, there's so much chaos when, when somebody passes away. The last thing you wanna do is have to start figuring this out and looking for plots. And somebody may say, well, I, I wanna be buried where my parents are in Queens, but does anyone know the cemetery, the deed, the a rabbi? Um, how, how do you want us to handle this? So it should be formalized in some way um, and heirs and children should know about the plan. Um, and, there are cemetery deeds as well, um, and I'm going to get to that a little bit later about how to hold all of this information. <clears throat> okay, did I go back? I think I went. Here we go. No, oops. Uh oh. <laughs> Sorry, I lost my place here. Let's share again. Just press share I'm screen. Sharing. Share again. Okay. Um, from, the from the beginning. Yep. Yep. Here we go. Sorry. And just move on. There you go. Okay. Can everyone hear me? 
Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Last will and testament. Lots of times when I was asking people if they have a power of attorney, they said, I don't think so, but we have a will. So a lot of people have wills and that's fine. Obviously it's not the only important document. So if you die in test state, if you die without a will, your estate will have to post a bond that's 2% of the gross estate per year while the estate is still open. And the state will then dictate who inherits. Um, so it's really best to have something in place, to have a will. An original copy of the will is preferable for probate in New Jersey. If you don't have an original copy of the will, you will need to file a complaint of probate and a judge will have to sign an order admitting a copy for probate, which is a hassle. Uh, so typically your attorney may offer to hold the original will. Uh, sometimes people want to keep it themselves, but you should indicate on it that it is the original so you know it's in your file that way and, and the seal and, and so forth will be there. But that is important um, to know in terms of, of handling probate. Um, Pensions, IRAs, annuities, life insurance policies, bank and security accounts require specific beneficiaries and are not governed by the will. So for example, if you have an IRA, it, it needs its own beneficiary in order for that person to inherit um, the assets associated with that. Um, so you need to have beneficiary designations and assign a person or persons to that. Um, you also need to, uh, wills need to be updated because of a state and inheritance tax implications. And beneficiary, beneficiaries may also need to be updated because people have a falling out or someone passes away or they change their mind about it. So that is, is critically important also to make sure that, and that's something else you can speak with your attorney about, about how, or, or your uh, former employer about how to update a beneficiary. Andrea, can you go back on your, you're on number six, the medical file. Could you go back to the uh, will slide? There we go. There we go. Just keep going forward so you get to number five, your number five. No, I'm going to go back to. No, I can't wait. Here. Just Here. if you want, just scoot down. Last yeah, there you testament. Go. Yeah, and then uh, do a slideshow if you can. Okay, so we'll move on to the next one. Medical file of life. Okay. Medical file of life, um, there are templates online for this. You, you don't even need anything that fancy. It basically is a list of your medical history, your medications, your physicians, and it should be something that's readily accessible. Um, some people keep it in the, keep a copy of it in the glove compartment of their car. God forbid they should have an accident. Um, I know if you live at Windrows, it's in the freezer. Um, it's good to keep a copy of it handy, uh, readily available again. If, you know, emergency medical techs had to come to the house, it's all there. The other important thing about it is to keep it online so that the people who are your medical care proxy or proxies have access to it. And it should be updated. If your medications change, if your medical status changes, that way they can see it and they know exactly if they have to advocate, they know what's going on with you. Um, so that's also important. And as I said, you can get a template online and fill it in, but um, I think you could just write it out, print it and, and just put it wherever um, it should go. 
Okay, um, so number seven, this, there we go. Letter of instruction and personal dossier. Letter of instruction can convey any wishes, you know, to, to be seen at the time of your passing, any sentiments, anything um, that you would like uh, to occur um, after you have passed away. As part of the personal dossier, this letter of instruction can be included. The dossier should include all of the aforementioned legal documents, not the uh, medical information. Um, and obviously the post, it would be too late for that, but legal documents, insurance policies, land and the cemetery deeds, uh, financial accounts, vehicle titles, promissory notes, partnership agreements, and so forth. There should also be contact information for your attorney and your financial advisor. Um, so they can be contacted, particularly if your attorney is holding your orig the original will, uh, they would need to access that. So that should be a note in there if that attorney has the original will. Finally, passwords. And, and honestly, passwords probably should be shared with uh, your power of attorney in the meantime, in case they have to step in if you're hospitalized or ill or incapacitated and they need to get into your financial accounts. I mean, I see so many terrible situations where um, someone takes ill and, and a, a child tries to step in and and pay their bills and keep up with things. And it's impossible uh, to get into the accounts. It takes weeks and weeks and weeks um, to, again, they have to show their power of attorney and it's a very complicated process. So it's good to share that. A whole new category now is our digital assets. I don't know if anyone has cryptocurrency or NFTs. So the good news, bad news about them is that they're very secure because they're on this so-called blockchain. The bad news is if no one knows how to navigate your digital wallet, quote unquote, it's gone forever. Those assets cannot be obtained. So there is such a thing as a digital wallet and there's special hardware wallet to manage your cryptocurrency. If you already have this all figured out, God bless you. I don't know how many people it impacts, but you, you never know. So that's important. Um, your heirs need to know how to, how to find and access that device. Um, finally, um, in the letter of it, and well, we talked about the letter of instruction, but also a personal property memorandum can also be included in that dossier um, for art, jewelry, or any other special effects that are value or sentimental or financial value um, that you want to dedicate to someone. So um, that's also in that dossier. So that's that's it for the seven documents. It's an overview. Um, I'm happy to take questions. I have a question. Um, what about a, a safe deposit box? I know when I went on vacation, I put some of my jewelry there, but I mean, unless because they do check your ID. So what, what do you suggest with a safe deposit box? Yeah, so I, I you know, they are, it's sealed um, at the time of death. What? Sorry. Oh, okay, I think they, they used to seal them at the time of death. I think now with uh, a power of, a, so are you saying if someone passes away, so I, I went on vacation and I said to the kids, right, I, I put my jewelry in there. I said, here's where the key is. Okay. But I figured then, you know, basically I need my ID to access it. And if I'm not there, how do I, how do so I would, it? I would talk to them about a power of attorney form at the yeah. bank. Okay. Right. So, so somebody else has also access to the, the executor short certificate. Executor short certificate. I'm being told here. 
an exec yeah so go to the bank and get an executor yeah. short what state issues state issues an executive short and take it to the bank. certificate and then take it to the bank okay if you want them to have access to it mm -hmm. okay thank you you're welcome anybody else there's so uh Andrea, I don't know if you're seeing the chat. Number yeah. one, I, I had a couple of comments. So number one was from someone who really wanted you to stress the importance of the burial plan. Okay. Especially when there are multiple children and you know how that works out if there isn't a burial plan, let's say, and there are several children, they, you know, why what's so important about the burial plan? Because what's so important about the burial plan is because the last thing you want is conflict at the time of a loss. And if you want to protect your heirs from that, you will tell them what your wishes are. I mean, somebody, one child may have an idea, you know, one child may, uh, who knows what they want to do. They want to cremate mom. Mom is, you know, a very traditional Jew, she would want to be buried. You know, it, it, it you know, completely mitigates all of that conflict. And, and Andrew, I want to jump in and add, it's also really quite advantageous to families if you do the next piece, which is go to the funeral director and arrange everything and pay for it. Yeah, prepaid. Pay for your cemetery plots, pick out a casket, do all of your arrangements beforehand and do it as soon as possible because no one ever knows when you need it. Mm -hmm. And especially if someone dies younger, to have to have uh, relatives go in and pick out a casket and have to do all those arrangements is really quite difficult. So the greatest gift one can give to your relatives mm -hmm. is to do all, and I mean all the pre-arranging, and pay for it. Yes, that's that's a really great idea. And I will tell you that my experience is that children don't like to talk to their parents about this. It makes them very uncomfortable. So I want to answer if I can give you one more uh, something to all the the ladies who are here. Um, you know, doing a will is hard, right? But it could also be something fun. And I'll tell you the part that can be fun, which is if you have jewelry and, and for the gentlemen as well, if you have jewelry, you know, make it an evening with your children and discuss the stories that are behind each of the things that you want to leave and even talk about why you want to leave them. And I will say that I, I have that list that my siblings and I did with our parents and we did it 25 years ago. And we remember the fun stories. And um, then there's no fighting. Then it's all taken care of. So um, if as anything you can pre-plan. Right. It's a gift. It's really a, it's gift. a gift. A gift to your kids. I know my parents had their plots. I knew where they were. I knew what their wishes were. And you're dealing with enough at the time of a loss. It's it's something you really don't want to have to deal with. So and, thank you, Rabbi. That's and I'll, and I'll add one more thing. If there is a discussion, and I've had the discussion actually with some of you already here, um, even though I've only been here a year and a half, I've actually had the discussion with some of you already about um, which kind of burial um, you'd like. Uh, I, I'm happy to have that, especially when there are, are children or siblings or a couple who wants something different. As Andrea just said, the time to figure out what kind of burial is not after someone dies or while they're in intensive care, because then feelings are high. But if you can have that discussion, you know, I know that there are lots of different ways that people do burial. Some people want to be buried here. Some people want echo burial. Some people want to be buried in Israel. Some people are opting for cremation. And if you want to have those conversations and about what Jewish tradition says about them, I am happy to make an appointment with any of you who come to your home or to sit with you and your children. Okay. And those, but those are more private conversations. That's not for a group conversation. Right. Okay. Um, so this is being recorded. 
Uh, so if you didn't get all the information on this, it's going to be on our TJC YouTube channel. So you can listen to it again and take notes. However, um, this is my information here, my email. Feel free to email me. Someone asked about who could help with these documents. Um, call that number and ask for senior services and someone will give you names of, of local uh, attorneys or financial advisors who can help you with this. Um, and just feel free to email me with any questions. I'm just seeing if there's anything else Changes in the chat. The Okay, so um, you answered a, a question that I saw, so that's great. Uh, there's a comment, who is a good person locally to discuss all these with? And also, any ideas for medical uh, power of attorney other than spouse, like kids? Kids, a trusted friend. Um, you know, look, lots of people don't have children. So it's it's a friend, sometimes it's a nephew. It, it's someone who, who would be, who you feel is interested enough in you, who cares enough. I mean, that's critically important that they would care enough about you to wanna to make these decisions on your behalf. Um, if, if, you know, you, you have this conversation with, with an attorney or legal advisor, they might be able to give you some ideas about people in your life who might be appropriate for this. So uh, I have a comment that most people know when there are life insurance policies to be aware of them. Today's long-term care policies often have a death benefit, which few people think about. So I don't know if you have a comment about that. About uh, A death benefit? In long-term care policies, do, that they do they have they have a death, you know, benefit. Um, no. So the newer long-term care policies are hybrid. They are kind of a cross between a life insurance policy and a long-term care policy. So they aren't really writing long-term care policies anymore because they had absolutely no idea how much this was going to cost them when they were writing these very liberal, generous policies 20 to 30 years ago. So they've changed a lot. So yes, I mean, there could be a death benefit if it is a hybrid policy. But every policy is different. You have to talk to them and ask them all of those questions. If you want to stop your, uh, we could leave your share up so people can get your email and your. Yeah, um, just leave that on. And, and just let's important. leave that up. Right. So important. I'm just looking to see if there's any more comments or questions. Okay. There's a thank you. This was excellent. And I, I agree. Uh, you know, for me, there was information that, you know, it's, it's a difficult topic to think about. Yes. But it's so, so important. And this was very helpful. Good. And just a reminder, you know, all of these documents have to be revisited and updated. I mentioned it for the will, but all of them, because things change over time. So that's important. And, um, you know, we're, we've got senior services. We're happy to help you if something comes up and um, you need any kind of assistance. Yes, Rabbi. I also want to remind people that all of these documents besides storing them wherever else you're storing them, should be stored on a Google Doc or on your phone so that you have them in a way that's quite accessible. Not you, if you're the power of attorney for someone else, if you're the medical power of attorney, you want them readily accessible. So you want them in an online place where you can get to them quickly. Right, and, right. and, and whomever will be handling your affairs should know where this dossier is. But in the meantime, they should hold a copy of the power of attorney and the advanced medical director. director. So they can jump right in and do what they need to do. And the passwords too. So I've got a, uh, I've gotten a number of, um, you know, uh, uh, questions about seeing this. The, it, this is being recorded. 
and you will be able to get it on the Jewish Center YouTube site. It probably takes a couple of days uh, for it to be published, but it will be posted because it is recorded on the Jewish Center site. And I have no doubt that you have questions. Andrea will be happy to receive yeah. a phone call or an email from you. Absolutely. I'm happy to help you in any way that I can. So can I add a few things that I've done? That Go right ahead. Helpful? Okay, so one thing is, both of my children are on my checkbook and that would make it easier for them. And then with all my other information about my, uh, my portfolios, et cetera, I have them all signed documents from the organization. And so they have privy to that. And the other thing, if, um, if a spouse dies and you don't have a credit card in your own name, then you might have a problem. And most importantly, it's important to have your name, you know, I think I've said this already about having somebody's name on your checking account. So getting back to the safe deposit question, I went to the company, I got cards, each of my children filled them out, I brought them back. So they have privy to the, to the safe deposit box. And very funnily, every so often, I ask them, do you know where the key is? And they never remember. So I bring them upstairs and show them where the key is. But in any event, I think you just have to do as much as you can to make things easy. Yeah, it's really, it's truly a gift to your heirs or to those who will be handling your affairs to have this in place. Mm -hmm. So I, I've received a couple of uh, questions about accessing the uh, recording. Uh, you don't have to have a password. If you go to YouTube and you go to the Jewish Center of Princeton, you'll find our site and you just have to subscribe. I believe that's the way to do it. And uh, we, you Andrew, we have a on, question. You can, go, you can go on our website. Or on the website, right. And Andrea, I had a, uh, someone ask if they they could get a print of Peter the document. Yeah, yeah, I'll get it to you, Peter. Okay, I have great. his email address. Yes, excellent. I'm Thank happy you. to do that. Okay. Uh, any other comments or questions? Yeah, I want to do. Have... I, I want to do one plug for JFCS, which sure. is <laughs> for the work that Andrea does for our congregants um, who you know, need some senior advising, um, JFCS can help you with that as well. And um, all of their good work, taking care of those who need therapy in the community, for those who need food in the community, and for those who need senior services. So Andrea, thank you, You're not welcome. just you for, but um, Helene and everyone else <laughs> in our community that works at JFCS as our partners. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Two new messages. This was great. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, if you have a joint account, is it frozen if your spouse dies? No. 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 Sally, you're an attorney. No, right? <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. No, it's not. That's what it means that it's a joint account. Joint account, right. Okay. Okay. Well, can I so if we, yeah, if we shut down and you have a question, just email me, please. Okay. I, I just, I, I had a comment, uh, Dave Saltman. You can get a copy of a long-term care policy to, to for children when the poly, when you buy the policy. So you, be, you should be aware of what is available to the family. Okay. So when you, okay. So they know, but... You, the, the problem is, and I'm not going to argue with Dave, who's an expert in this, there are so many fine points in these policies that they beg questions. And I don't know that they will answer the question without that, yeah. that documentation, without the power of attorney. So they'll have an outline of the policy. But if they if they want to open the policy, and Dave, you're please correct me if if I'm wrong. Andrea, Andrea, you're exactly correct. Okay. But the point is, 
the family might not even know that mom and dad took these policies out. And right. they're going to see way before other circumstances arise that maybe there's been a change in mom. And gee, I didn't know that there was this help available. So it's useful for them. When I give a policy, I usually give copies for the parents to give to their children, just so everyone's aware. Good. Thank you. That's a great idea. Right. You're right. And some people have no idea if they're parents. I got news for you. Some people don't know if they have a long-term care policy. Just <laughs> <laughs> when, when they need it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay. Andrea, I'm sure you can see that we're getting many comments as to how helpful this Thank is. You. And I have to say for myself, I, I, you know, my parents were wonderful with mate, my mother, especially to make sure I was on all her accounts. I, I, it was easy. I knew everything about it. And I'm trying to do the same thing for my children. <laughs> it's, it's, it, this is very helpful. And I think I have to go back to the drawing board. <laughs> it's a lot of, it's a lot of work for sure. Yes. But, it's, but I know where to find you if I need information. You know, absolutely. Absolutely. So um, I, I, unless there are other comments or questions, I, I really want to thank Andrea so much for agreeing thank to Baba. do this. Thank you. And, thank you. Um, we also want to thank Ellen for arranging yes. the Great Minds Salons. We yes. want to thank Moshe for helping with tech tonight as well. And Andrea uh, and Ellen and all of you who come, have come out. Yeah, no, it's terrific. My pleasure. And we have a lot of great minds at the Jewish Center. So if you know someone with a great mind, let me know. And you and don't I have to be a physicist. <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> great. Okay. So I'm going to um, say good night to everybody. Thank you, Andrea. And thank you for uh, you know putting your information. So if we have more questions, we can contact yep. you. Absolutely. Yeah. I just want to wish everybody a happy, healthy Pesach coming up soon. And our next Great Mind Salon will be in May. I think it's May 20th, but I'm not sure. Um, and it will be Jamie Barron, who is a member of the congregation and is the CEO of Bend the Ark and had the pleasure of meeting President Biden. So she will tell us all about her organization and her position at Bend the Ark. So if you don't know Ben, the, for, for the folks, I know you know, Ellen, but Ben the Ark is the premier Jewish um, advocacy organization for social justice issues in the United States. And she is a member of the Jewish Center with young kids in our school. So we are thrilled yes. to have her. Yes. So look forward to our uh, advertisements about next month. So I'm going to wish everybody a uh, Lila Tov. Thank you. And we will see Thanks. you next month. Thank, Thank you, you, Ellen and Moshe and Rabbi. Thank you so help. much. Okay. Thank you. Good night, Bye -bye. everybody. Good night.